first part of this video, we had a look at the structure of books, uh, starting with the, the evolution of the Codex, which replaced scrolls, which had been used for many centuries by Egyptians and Romans. But as the Codex evolved, we had a look at uh, how it had changed, how the structure had changed, methods of sewing uh, and covering the books, through until the advent of printing in the 15th century. Prior to that, prior to um, printing usable, using movable type um, was developed, a book would take perhaps many months to produce because it was in manuscript. Um, and so by the time it was finished, there was no real hurry to get it bound. Once books started coming off of the, uh, the printing presses, suddenly there, there was a need to, there's a great demand for the bookbinding to get these books bound. And it's really from that point where the bookbinding processes were speeded up um, that there was a gradual reduction in the strength of the binding, which uh, reached its peak really in medieval times with sewing on double cords or thongs. But gradually, changes were made to uh, speed speed it up, and as as the demand for books grew, and as I say, that had a, a negative effect on on the strength of the binding. So, this is a an eighteenth century book. Now, uh, obviously, it's in rather poor condition, but uh, now you can see that it's got just single cords, the double cord method of sewing, which um, appeared around about the 10th century, is now replaced by single cords because it's, it's faster to sew, sew the book in that way. Books, unless they were excuse me, used for ceremonial purposes, books tended to be just in functional bindings. This one, as you can see, although it's rather decrepit, it's just a simple single piece of leather um, covering the book. With a, with a title label on the spine. But gradually, as we move into the 18th century, um, people were acquiring a great deal of wealth through colonial trade and through slavery and so on. And they built great houses, great country houses, which are filled with beautiful furniture. And one of the things they wanted was a library um, full of beautifully bound books. So there's a, there's a gradual trend to, towards far more decoration on, on the books. So now we get um, books like this and the, uh, the people wanted them to look far more refined uh, rather than just this sort of crude functional binding. So the leather was paired much thinner um, so that it would go around the edges of the boards far more neatly. Um, it was paired very thin down the, the joints and uh, the rather these rather ugly bands, rather crude bands which were came from the actual structure of the book, these tended now to be replaced with a much neater much neater bands and they, these um, and that's because these are actually false bands. They're not part of the structure of the book at all, because a, a sewing method was developed whereby the cords were now recessed into the back of the book. When the pages were assembled, the sections were assembled for binding, a, a groove was actually cut into the back of the book for the cords to fit into. But obviously, um, they can only do that if they use much thinner cords. As a result, the strength of the joint here, now using very thin leather and very thin cords, and the result in so many of these books is that the, the joint gives way. Uh, another a slightly later development which occurred in the which first appeared in the 19th century, was something called case binding. Again, this was introduced to speed up the, 
production of books. Up until uh, at this point, it was very much a manual process. The sewing, the binding was all done by hand. The gold tooling and the decoration, the whole thing was done by hand. A much faster way, and the way which all, all, all books are produced nowadays, is what is called case binding. Uh, and here, the book block, the, the text block, with, which is the printed pages, it, this is just a blank um, example, but that is produced separately, and by the end of the 19th century, certainly, they, they had machines which would sew the pages together. So that was all done by machine. The cover of the book, then, was produced as a separate item. Um, a piece of, in this case, cloth with two boards and a, um, a sticker in the, in the spine there. And the text block was then fitted into the case and simply attached by gluing that piece there and the same at the back. And the problem with this is, whilst we've seen a weakening of the joint here, this is even an even weaker method of, of um, constructing a book, because this joint is really just a piece of paper uh, and some of the, the spine covering going over there. But the big advantage of this is that it can be almost fully automated. They developed machines which would produce a case like that, um, and now, any decoration that you wanted to put onto the cover, whether it's just the title on the spine or decoration on, on the boards, uh, this could all be done by machine using an engraved brass plate, sometimes it should cover the whole book, um, which would have the decoration, the titling, lettering, whatever on it, that could go into a machine and an engraved plate would come down and transfer all that information and decoration through gold foil and transfer it onto the cover of the book, which was then fitted to the text block. So again, this is a much weaker form of binding, but far, far quicker because of, it allows uh, extensive autom automation. The introduction of book cloth didn't really occur until the first half of the 19th century because um, previous attempts using fabric meant that when the fabric was glued or pasted to stick it to the boards, um, the paste would tend to bleed through the cloth and disfigure the, um, the appearance of the book. But in the first part of the 19th century, uh, book cloth was developed which was coated so that you didn't get that bleed through. Cloth is much cheaper than leather. Um, leather was a, an expensive material and indeed it still is because of the production process. So today um, leather is only used for specific um, hand bound books or individually designed books. Uh, we use cloth a more recent development um, over the last 50 or 60 years is just the glued binding where instead of sewing book together um, it's simply held together with glue. The whole technology of, of adhesive has is, is, is developed very rapidly in over the last few decades really and um, which means that using hot melt adhesives you can simply take a stack of pages roughen up the spine, put some little grooves in it, and press adhesive into it, and that holds all the pages together. And then similarly, uh, the case can be made in much the same way. And there's the book. And so the book has become really, um, the book stu structure has evolved really from very much a, a manual process with, with lots of decoration to a, an automated process. Um, simply because it's quick and it's cheap. So the, today the book in, in many ways has become 
more of a disposable item. Um, and then, of course, moving more recently into the digital world, we, our books are now digital, um, and you don't actually need to have a physical copy, although, fortunately, uh, the book buying public still prefer to actually have a book in their hand rather than read it on a tablet or a, or a phone. So that hopefully just gives some indication of how the book has evolved, uh, going back to um, the beginning of this um, of the current era right through to today.